You're listening to the Getting Social Podcast, where we get social on entrepreneurship and everything that comes with it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Getting Social Podcast. I am your host, Jeff Palacard, and this episode is about the art of storytelling. As human beings, we've been telling stories since the caveman days. Just look at the scriptures. They tell us the story of how they lived. And today, when we watch a movie or read a good book, what fuels our attention to keep watching or reading? The story, right? If the story is boring, we lose interest. It's that simple. We even get to know the characters as if they were friends or family. We get to care about them because of their stories. The art of storytelling, however, is not only used in movies, TV, books, or even music. It's also used in marketing. That's right, marketers use storytelling to get the attention of the market they're targeting. An interesting story about a product or a company will make us care enough to buy. In this episode of Getting Social, we have a fun, motivational conversation with Tommy De Armas. Much more than a graphic designer, he is the creator of Fishy. Fishy is a Puerto Rico-based island lifestyle brand inspired by a big-eyed fish. They produce creative designs on high-quality clothing and accessories to customers who enjoy the nautical, coastal, and island life experience. Fishy is also big on the environment. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. Fishy lives in the ocean that we continuously pollute. And Fishy has a special message for all of us. Come on, guys. You can do better. So let's dive right in. Sorry, I, I just can't help it. It's time to get social with Fishy. All right, so first of all, Tommy, thank you very much for accepting my invitation to be a guest on the show. I am a huge fan of storytelling and how much of a role it plays in marketing and branding. And I still remember our first conversation to this day and you sharing your story with Fishy um, with me. And uh, it really inspired me. And um, I would love it if you could uh, start off by telling us a little bit more, not only about you, your background, but also how you came about the story of Fishy. Uh, Jeff, thank you for the invitation. Very happy you know, to be here and to share my story and the brand story. Um, mm -hmm. I am a graphic designer. I went to uh, Parsons School of Design, and I've been doing that uh, since the 90s, 91, when I graduated. Um, basically, I always had this uh, entrepreneur uh, spark within me to create something. And that's when in 1991, while I was in Miami, a friend of mine uh, asked me, you know, to create some kind of like a design for a t-shirt. And so I showed them the uh, character, Fishy. Uh, the client didn't like it, but I did. And basically what I did after that is just I made some copyrights on the design. And little by little started working on the uh, on the little fish. And cats just started coming out. And, and I said, well, you know, there, there must be something within this character that is so interesting. Um, for those who doesn't know much uh, about our brand, uh, Fishy, uh, it's a Puerto Rico-based apparel and accessory brand that is inspired by its main character, a big eye fish that evokes the tropical life. Uh, we showcase the island life, the attitude to bright colors, one quotes, and unique designs on apparel and accessories and we market to consumers who enjoy the traveling, nautical, outdoor activities, and shop for unique uh, local products. Um, our catalog is made of t-shirts, green shirts, microfiber towels, stickers, and, and keychains, and many, many cell covers, and many, many more products that are all, you know, inspired by the main character, the guy fish called Fishy. Um, our brand is trademark, registered trademark in the United States, Puerto Rico, Mexico, and recently in Japan. Most of, most of our designs are 
can be customized according to uh, the destination, maybe by just a, a change in color or maybe by um, some name drop or something, I can change it to uh, according to any destination. Um, since we're in Puerto Rico, we work together with local suppliers uh, and we try you know, to provide as much work as we can in order to help the local economy. Um, lately, we're also working with some uh, products that they're eco-friendly, that basically are made of recycled materials and organic uh, cotton, and that's something that we are looking into, you know, help, you know, the environment somehow, and combine fishy with it, uh, it will be a great combination in order for us you know, to stand out as a cool, educational, and help the planet kind of plan. So that's kind of like a brief thing about the innovation. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, one thing that really stood out is the fact that, you know, you're incorporating uh, the eco-friendliness of a portion of, of the brand and of the product uh, into your campaign, which is important. Um, that's actually one of my questions that I want to save for a little bit later um, as to why it's so important, you know, in order for us to save our planet and, 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 and be, you know, more friendly towards our planet. Um, but let's stay on the topic of storytelling still, because that, to me, that's, that's one of the things that really got me into Fishy, uh, the brand, is the story behind it. And even when you said earlier that, you know, you're a graphic designer and you were designing basically a, a, a concept and a logo for a client that did not really like it. And then <laughs> and it turns out that... Yeah. You're not only developing a brand, you have developed a brand already with Fishy, but now you have thousands and thousands of people who love it, including myself, because I think Fishy stands for something even more than just a brand. It's, uh, like you said earlier, it's, it's a fish. And uh, if anybody can talk about uh, how unfriendly the environment has been uh, in recent years, it, it's fish because they live in the water that we continuously pollute, you know? So Correct. I want to go a little bit more deeper, uh, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> about uh, Fishy, the character, uh, and, and, and what, if you would give him a personality, what would it be? That's first, the first part of the question. The second part of the question is, why do you think storytelling is so attractive uh, to an audience and why it helps brands connect so much with an audience. Well, storytelling has been around for ages, of course, and people connect. People find the truth behind the story. People, they, 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 they share something, uh, and, and, and they generate even an idea, so generate a culture. Uh, they unite people. It's very important, you know, for a brand to tell the story because people will, will, will relate or not relate and then you define your own audience. So in our own case, it's very interesting because our, our, our brand is not just a t-shirt or, 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 or a hat or something. It's a character. And, and this character has many, many, many more characters. So for us, it's very interesting or, or it's fun to tell the story. Of course, you tell the story about the character and you tell the story of where you've been, what you're doing, and all this. And, and everything together, all those ingredients create a great, uh, uh, I call it, let's say, a, a banquet, you know, a great feast for those who are eager to listen to story. They want to visualize a story. They want to create their own movie, and they relate. So storytelling is, is, is very important for you when you develop a plan or develop a bit, any kind of business. you, you got to be open like a book. Let them read your story. Let them see, visualize your story. So stories really convey, you know, that uh, culture that you're trying to build, those values. That really unite people and your customers. So that's why storytelling is very important for any business. So. 
I think one of the key things you said um, is um, that's how you know people can relate um, and people relate to stories. Um, they they see themselves in certain stories. Uh, that's that's what that's what's so important about storytelling, in my opinion, also. And even for me, like uh, our relationship, I think it was on my end. I was drawn to the story since the beginning on how you started out with Fishy and the challenges that you were also facing in the beginning because Fishy has been around for a while, you know, so it has, it sure. has had its ups and downs. But that's, that's what makes, I think, Fishy so important today is the story behind it. Um, and Correct. speaking of the Correct. ups and downs, you know, uh, the challenges that you've gone through, um, wh- what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've gone through in developing the brand of Fishy? And what are you doing today, I guess, to overcome some of those challenges and using some of the new tools that are available to us, such as social media and, and the digital marketing and all of that to continuously grow your brand? Correct. I, you know, before jumping into the, uh, into, into that, those questions, mm-hmm. it, it, you said, you said something in there very interesting is that and again, it's a summary of what we talked. It's, it's, it's a question. Some people might want to hear your story of how you failed and how you succeeded and what mm. steps did you took. Because mm-hmm. you can always find out, you know, things that might help you get faster to your goal. But maybe I would love to, to share my ideas and I would love to share my experiences. And, 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 and maybe that will help you to even do better than me to get and achieve your goals. And that's one side of the business. Of course, the other side of the business is the fun part. It's that you tell, you know, about each character and, and the, the relation, uh, the story behind the character. And so, again, the first question is so important in the storytelling. It's, 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 it's really, you create an impact somehow. And, and people really enjoy that and relate. So, anyway, mm-hmm. just wanted to mention that. In terms of mm-hmm. the challenges that I've had, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, yes, I've learned uh, business through mistakes and through learning from others. Mm-hmm. Storytellers that tell us, they, they told me, you know, don't go that route, go this route. Maybe it did work for them. And it did maybe for me, maybe not. So a lot of the challenges is at the beginning, you don't know where exactly to start. You have so many crazy ideas and so many things that you want to do that sometimes you get overwhelmed of how to do it. Of course, that's the main question is, where am I going to get the money? How am I going to invest? You know, if I invest this much, if I invest too little, and all that stuff. And those are, you know, challenges, you know, that probably you put to yourself, that you, that you create yourself. But money will appear. All you have to do is work on it. Work on a great concept. Try to create a great pitch. Try to create, you know, a good uh, uh, presentation uh, visually. And, and, and little by little test here and there. Uh, so money, eventually somebody will like the idea, you know, invest. Or, or you put it out of your pocket, which hurts. But, hey, if you believe in your idea, just go for it. Another challenge is, you know, how to grow. You know, maybe, maybe you, when you're little, when you're small, it's, you know, quite easy you know, to handle all the duties and all the uh, things to do for the brand. But once you start getting the staff involved, you want them, you know, to do certain things and you've got to be on, on top of your brand and your north and keeping your north, you know, and your staff focused on the north and the concept is very important too. And that's another challenge. I guess that you know, it all depends on you. It all depends on you. If you want to have, you know, what kind of challenges uh, would you have? Is basically how do you want that? You know, how the challenges will affect you. Every challenge is an opportunity. Every challenge is something yeah. that will give you a, a point or, or an idea or something to focus on, and. You you, ha- you you have to work on it. You have to work on it. You cannot avoid it. You got to step on and work on it. And sometimes, you know, the challenge is tough, 
Well, get tougher. Sometimes the challenge is easy. Well, then, you know, good for you. Go for it. But everything has a solution. Everything, not health, of course. Uh, you know, keep yourself healthy. But <laughs> in business, in business, you, you, everything has a solution. Everything. So it's just a matter of, you know, looking for the best one that fits of the profit, you know, the, 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 the solution for you to overcome the challenge. Um, that's my, 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 advice, my best suggestion. And, and yeah. you had another question, Jeff, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I don't remember the, the third question. No, I, I, the, the third part of the question was like, uh, overcoming those challenges, obviously, that you just, uh, um, responded to, but also how, like, the current tools that we're using now, such as, let's say, social media, digital marketing, and uh, those new platforms that you have access to now to promote your brand, how does that help, you know, overcoming some of those challenges and the best ways to use, utilize those platforms in order to, to overcome those challenges? Or I know some of those some, challenges. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll, give you, I'll, I'll give you some measurements. Before the pandemic, before the lockdown here in Puerto Rico, we were, <laughs> I'm sorry, we had source, fiscal source. And... People mm -hmm. were used to going to the mall and touch the products and see the size and, and hear the story. And, you know, and, and, and they were like, they knew where Fiji was. And so they got closer to the product. And if they had to return something, they returned. Okay. What comes with that? First, there's a rent, staff, mm -hmm. or, you know, all the uh, 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 operational expenses. That basically is, you know, for a growing brand, sometimes it's overwhelming those expenses because you're still testing and testing and testing. And sometimes the malls do not bring a lot of people. Sometimes they do. And it's seasonal. What happened after the mm -hmm. lockdown? Thank God that we were very ready with web. We, I'm a, I've, been, I've been developing websites since the 90s. I was... Uh, I had a graphic design studio with great people and talented people, and, and, and we were doing a lot of web design and even platforms, you know, like content management and all this stuff. So, so I know web. I know web. And we was very easy for us to pivot towards web. So what we decided to do, it was basically, okay, we don't know. This is how, These are on certain times. We don't know exactly how long this is going to take, the pandemic and the COVID and all this stuff. And we saw a challenge, and we had to make a decision. We decided to close all the physical stores, one, because we weren't sure if we were going to make some sales, but most important, for the safety of my staff. And we saw this opportunity or this challenge in order for us to say, okay, we have, a, we have a sales channel right there, where, and we do wholesale. So let's focus on that. All that money that was invested before on the uh, physical locations, let's just move it towards the web. That's what we've been doing lately. We started working harder, working harder, working hard, and, and, and being on top of social media. We do social, uh, Facebook and we do Instagram. We also do, you know, a couple of uh, um, other, other, you know, uh, videos and animations in YouTube and some stuff like that. But we, I, I wish I, I've done this before because I see the reaction of how people uh, get the concept and they, they, they I see the followers duplicating month by month. And we expect, you know, to have a, you know, very uh, uh, a reach, a great reach by the end of the year, if things are looking the way that they are. So, we put the platform, you know, the website, top notch. Of course, since we were in a lockdown, we had to depend on what we got available at the moment. There was no production at all. All the, all, all the, all the uh, printers and embroideries, they were closed. So, thank God that we had inventory, plenty of inventory. So, people started buying because, one, they wanted to receive something. Every every product, every order, we call them up. Every order, we call them up and say thank you for supporting our brand. If there any question, we are packaging your products right now, and it will be delivered 
uh, within, you know, the, a Friday. So we were doing shipping once, one shipping per week just to, you know, try to see how things, you know, were out there at the postal office, the people, you know, try to avoid too much contact out there. Let me, let me interrupt you one, let me interrupt you one second, Tommy. Sure. You're saying that you're calling, I think, on the phone, every person that buys from you guys online? Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. man. That's, and you know why? You know, yeah. you know why? They, they were surprised. They were surprised. Of course they were. I, 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 I would be extremely surprised, pleasantly surprised, because that's great personal touch. I love that. I love that. It's exactly. customer service. First of all, mm -hmm. you know, if they're buying clothing, if they're buying clothing, they cannot feel it. They can. They only. They expect you. Or they're trusting us that the information in the website is correct. And of course, it is correct. But some mm -hmm. sizes run bigger. Some sizes run smaller. So mm -hmm. we did that one because we wanted to try to avoid returns. So we have mm -hmm. this specific item that is a spring shirt, and the spring shirt runs big. So people were buying the spring shirts according to the T-shirt size that they were using. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. You should buy one size down. So little by little, we started talking, you know, to each client and understand them. This is kind of like the customer discovery, customer's research. And we ended up, you know, giving them the right size. We put that sticker, a fishy sticker on the package, and they received the package, and they were grateful for it. And then all the reviews on the website, not on the website, on social media, were great. They felt that we were with them, that we they were shopping right there with us because of a call. They received a great package, very well uh, uh, designed, uh, you know, everything beautiful inside. So they felt that they got something really unique. And they, 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 they ended up being, you know, fans. That, and they started buying more and buying more and buying more. So we decided that we ordered. We see customers that they already purchased 10 times, you know, since March. So some are accessories. We don't call because the accessories is just an accessory. It doesn't have a size. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do that. We do that mostly with the apparel. And there's a lot of apparel going out the door uh, uh, from, a, you know, from a shop, you know, from our e-commerce. So they love it. And they refer to us. And they... They give us the reviews, and they really do enjoy those calls. So it's been awesome in terms of that. In terms of uh, advertising, what we've done, uh, it's very interesting. We basically going after the Puerto Rico demographic. And why the Puerto Rico demographic? Uh, first of all, we've been the brand uh, was created in 1991, but it was first launched in 1994 in major department stores here in Puerto Rico. Um, the brand had to stop once the major department stores closed. So 15 years after 1997, that's in 2012, I relaunched the, 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 the brand back in a great festivity party called the San Sebastian Festivity. This is a great place to go because you got locals and tourists. All right. To make the story uh, uh, short, what happens was that people remember the plan. And a lot of people are in Puerto Rico and a lot of people in the United States. We've got three million in, the, in our island and there's four million out there in the United States. What happened is that the investment that we created, that we, we invested, we invested on the Puerto Rican target. Why? First of all, the click was cheaper. If I wanted to target Florida and if I wanted to target, let's say, uh, West Palm Beach, the click would have been higher because I was being specific to the target and the target was going to cost me probably like 50, 60, 70 cents per click. No, I cannot. I did, you know, what I have to do and I targeted the Puerto Rico and the click was 3 cents. Great. So now let's reach wow. people here in Puerto Rico and let's click and let's reach the people in the United States. What is the strategy behind all this? The people in Puerto Rico, they know the brand. The people in the United States, they know the brand. But in the United States, where I want to go and I want to export my brand, what I wanted to create is that ripple effect. 
one for a reason, one U.S. citizen buying my product, a friend comes and sees that product, might become a customer. And that is an exponential, an increment, that's a ripple effect that I'm looking for and it's working. So right now we're selling a lot in Florida, we're selling in Massachusetts, and North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, California. <laughs> Sorry. So it, 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 the, the, the strategy is working. Also, content. A lot of content. People enjoy, they, they relate. And since we're a tropical kind of brand, we're always looking, you know, for, for those, uh, you know, we, we, we build our own content and, and, and we, we make it fishy style. And they, they, and they, they enjoy it. And you see the reaction lately. We've been getting a lot of people now in the summer with a swing shirt. And when they all take the picture together, you see all fishes in their shirt. And it looks like a, how do you call this? Um, a school of fish. <laughs> interesting. So they're all standing together, and each one might have a hot pink uh, swing shirt, blue or black or whatever. But all the fishes are white. So when they stand together, it looks like a school of fish. And it's so cute, so cool. And people send photos. They really do relate. So web for us and social media for us have been that rocket that we needed in order to reach uh, the United States, in order for us to export our product, in order to make sales. And at the end, we're saving a lot of money in operational expenses. Just the, just a matter of rent in a physical space in a, in a mall is too expensive. It's yeah. very expensive. And then you're paying for that traffic. Exactly. And not only that, you gotta you gotta pay for your staff. And they'll mm -hmm. have, you know, seventy six hours, eighty four hours. And sometimes you're there and you do see people buying. And that hurts. So it does. We yeah. we, we 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 did you know, we saved somewhere around thirty five to forty percent of our uh overhead, our operational expenses. So what we did is invested on web. Invested on social media and look at the results. We're selling every day, every day, every day. And at the end, it's a 24 hour, seven days a week store that operates by itself. And it's amazing. It's amazing. So, web is the way to go. Web has been a blessing. Thank God that we know about web and social media. We've been learning a lot. We still have to learn more. And, and definitely uh, right, you know, to, to, to move it very towards that. So definitely that's that's what's been going on and that's what all the changes that we've been applying to so far. Man, this is uh, so great that you, you actually also answered my, my next question. Uh, so I'm going to recap <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, because you, you, you definitely... No, that's great. That's perfect. I'm gonna, I, I want to recap because um, at first, I had asked you about your challenges, and you did mention some of them, but I think from what I'm understanding so far from our conversation is uh, the pandemic actually was probably one of your biggest challenges, because I remember last year you were telling me about some of the successes, successes that you've been having with those physical stores and the expansion that you were experiencing also in adding additional stores, uh, and then all of a sudden, boom, all of it is gone because people are not going to stores anymore. Even though that was actually already a trend that people were noticing, that people are not actually going to stores anymore, and people are migrating over um, websites, uh, 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 buying um, website buying habits, so online buying habits. Uh, but with this now, we don't have a choice. And like you it, said... It is true. It, it is true. Yeah. It is true. And let me, and let me interrupt you on this. I started uh -huh. to see, I started to see a demographic of, let's say, 45 and over that I expect them to go to the mall instead of a uh -huh. website. And since they, were, they couldn't go to the mall and they needed to give a, a present to a whoever, they ended up on the web and they got used uh -huh. to it and they liked it. And they liked it because not only the performance of the website how easy it was to navigate, 
But the customer service is very important. A call doesn't hurt. So it, it, it's very, very, very cool to mention that. Anyway, sorry to put into it. No, that, that, you're absolutely right. You know, if you have to pair that with customer service, you know, because uh, that's the entire, because customer service is the one part that's not as tangible on a website than it is on uh, at a physical store level because once you come into a All store, right. you could ha- you could have people you know you know even shake your hand if you want to be wh- wh- go the extra mile. Say how are you doing? How's your day going? You know, um, I'm gonna mention sure. this brand here, and it, it's not a plug. They're not paying me for it. I wish they did, but uh, Chick Fil A. I'm gonna use that example because every time I go to Chick Fil A, uh, whether I'm on drive through or I'm inside of the store, they are they go out. They go above and beyond, and they they ask me for you know how I'm doing or how was my day. You know, um, did I enjoy the food? You can tell that they go out of their way to make sure that you feel comfortable and that you feel happy to be there. Uh, even during the pandemic, I spent almost an hour because my kids love Chick Fil A. Also, I love it too. So right. I use it as an exa- I use it as an excuse. Who wants Chick Fil A? You know, I know Daddy wants Chick Fil A, but you know the kids always say yes, yeah, so I'm happy. But uh, earlier on in the pandemic, I spent almost an hour in line to get some Chick Fil A, and in in most instances, you would feel terrible and then pissed off when you get to that front of the line, blah blah blah. But even before I got there, somebody came next to the car and said, "We apologize for the wait. You know how it is, blah blah blah." And I came closer to the window. There was somebody else that was welcome, welcoming me and asking me if everybody in my family Correct. was healthy, Correct. if we were safe. Correct. I'm like, man, this is nice. And, uh, is everybody in your family safe? You know, because I'm happy that you asked me that, you know. So you calling people over the phone when they're buying from you says a lot about who you are and what the brand represents. You know, it's and not, your it's taking staff, your, and your personality. And your staff. And your staff will learn. That's why when you went to that place to get your food and all that stuff, and they Mm -hmm. treat you well, it's because the upper management knew how to tell the story. Yes. And that's the beginning of this conversation. The story is telling. So if you Mm -hmm. make them feel part of it through your your sample, your story, you know, that's Mm -hmm. how they're going to treat your customers. So you are the leader has to be that storyteller and has to be the sample and be, you know, on top of that sample so the rest of the team can learn and pass it and pass it and transmit that uh, core of, of your product, of your concept, of who you are. And once you transmit that, that's when you create a community and that's when you, you, you see people being fans and see people that really enjoy being around it. And so are your customers. Because you Absolutely. did your job, and that's, that's exactly, you just went, it's exactly the same way. Of course, that's physical, ours is web. So maybe, you know, one call, what does it hurt? They feel good. Absolutely. They love it. And you know what you're doing here? This is something that uh, I talk to uh, about my clients all the time. There's, a lot of people make the mistake of, let's say you have, we have a, what we call a customer journey. Uh, it's, a, it's a map or it's like a, it's a diagram. And the customer journey starts obviously with the first interaction between, at, least at that point, a potential customer. Uh, it might be seeing a billboard. It might be seeing a, a commercial on TV, uh, on social media. It might be a jingle. It might be anything. It might be a, a, a magazine. It might be coming into a store whatever that first interaction is. And a lot of businesses make the mistake of closing that journey the moment that the person buys. So the person buys, the person is a customer, that's it, it's a close. But that's not where it it, it ends. There's another level. After the person becomes a customer, what's what we call advocate. You can call it fan, if you will, but you can also call it advocate. That's what the top brands of the world succeed at doing. Now, the person that received the call from you, when they get the, the shirt or they get the, or whatever piece of apparel or accessory from you, 
then they're going to be, they're going to feel special. They're going to, not only obviously the quality is great, the product is great, sure. but then they already sure. feel that connection with you. So guess what? You're going to say, hey, Jeff, I bought this shirt from this company called Fishy. You should check them out. They become your salespeople. They become your advocates because of the way of you course. treat them. I'm talking Correct. about, I'm talking about Chick-fil-A now today, a billion dollar company uh, because of the way I'm treated by them. Sure. Right? So, Sure. That's, that's how you build an empire. Uh, and to add to the storytelling portion also, that's how you tell your story, you know, from beginning sure. to end. It doesn't end when the person gives you the dollar or they give you your, their credit card. It ends. Actually, it never does. It never, it, it, it never does. Correct. It never does. It never does. Mm-hmm. There, 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 people, so, there, there will keep on following. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a great, sure. great, great angle. Great angle. So I have um, another question for you here. The last question is sure. uh, another deep, uh, a deep one. You know, we we started off with uh, storytelling, obviously, and we spoke about how important it is to you and for the brand to uh, be advocates for um, eco-friendly products. Um, sure. And I feel overall, as entrepreneurs, leaders, professionals, uh, we have a duty that's outside of running and growing our business. I feel like because of the platform that we have uh, 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 attained for ourselves, we can use that platform and leverage that platform to influence others, to empower others, and to do good things for our planet. So what is your message overall to entrepreneurs uh, that are... You know, whether, whatever industry that they're in, what is your message toward their responsibilities towards doing good for the planet? And also with Fishy, you know, using Fishy as that platform yourself, how do you plan on helping the planet being more eco-friendly? Um, definitely with, you know, to answer the how to help the planet to be more eco-friendly. Definitely mm-hmm. I see, you know, Fishy. To be a kind of like ambassador, the fish, there's the ocean. Of course, he likes mm-hmm. to go skydiving or he likes to go roller skating out of sight of the water because it's a character. It's a fish, but it's a character. So we see, and this is very interesting, Jeff, because when 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 we when we were in the pandemic lockdown, we started doing videos, and we see that all these characters, perfect fit for the fish, and. So what we see is that eventually Fishy can tell the story of how to be nice with the environment, you know, recycle, be creative, enjoy nature, try to educate somehow, uh, um, you know, because we have to. We have to. We, we have kids. And, and, and what are we going to give them? We're going to give them waste? No, man. You know, let's give them something nice because they will be the next one to take care of the planet. So we, we basically, not only in products that we're building and finding sources of how to use, you know, for example, our T-shirts are, uh, uh, some of the T-shirts, the eco-friendly, are made of five plastic bottles, recycled plastic bottles, and organic coffee. Well, there you go. You took five bottles out of the ocean and you mm-hmm. make a T-shirt. Great. Super. Mm-hmm. I'm great. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, some of our hair, we... Use recycled polyester and organic cotton. Great. So recycle is not trash. Recycle is interesting. Very interesting. You can create amazing things with recycled materials or, or, or things that are just there. Give them life. Give them life because they're unique. And somehow use other techniques and create something, make something very impressive, very cool. So what sources are available out there? Well, definitely, you know, in the power business, one of the most contaminants of the globe, uh, we're trying, you know, to bring it down by using, you know, recycled plastic bottles instead of nylon or polyester instead of nylon, whatever. Trying, you know, to mm-hmm. recycle and try to avoid generating more trash. We are a small fish, but we will create and we will become a global impact. We will somehow, with our storytelling, our characters, and the products that we're developing, we will let people know 
what we're doing and how we are supporting for a better world for us, for the kids, and for our grandkids and the next and the next generation. That's the north that we want to go. Definitely, it all comes down, you know, to how much the customers are willing to pay. And so sourcing right now into those materials is very expensive, so you got to go little by little by little. But we're working towards that. We're working right now, you know, towards you know, creating, so creating a great concept for people who will understand what Fiji stands and what it's all about, and little by little introducing and catalog those products. And that will be something great uh, uh, for us to do. Another thing that is not, um, let's say, about, you know, helping the environment, but helping society. I, I, I look for influencers, but my influencers are not those who they just pose the T-shirt or they just pose the hats and all that stuff. No. The influencers that I look, they create, they have an essence with society. If this guy, for example, old guy, that gets kids away from drug areas and they put the kids to surf. So they put the kids, you know, to do a run in the beach or something like that. And that person exists. And that person for me is an influencer. And I would like to dress him. I would like to give him all the, uh, all the apparel and everything. Because kids, when they look at that guy, they will see him as a hero. And that's an influencer. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that we are doing. We're not only working towards, you know, a better environment. We need, without, you know, a great society and great leaders, great influencers like those, it will be beautiful. It will be great. Because those are the ones that they're going to take out the environment. They're going to take care. Of, uh, of of their own, and they, we're going to build a beautiful society. So those are my two uh, major, um, let's say, pieces uh, of advice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an advice. Well, those are my, my you know, my, my kind of like my targets. I'm always looking for mm -hmm. those two things. You know, essence, helping the environment, helping society, and those are my channels. Of how to provide better for the for the environment and how to provide and be helpful for society. So uh, that's man, my my that, thing. I knew I would get that out of you because that's something that's also very uh, important to me. Uh, I think we we do have uh, 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 that that responsibility, you know. And and sure. uh, I don't know if uh, you you've heard that before in superhero movies, but with superpowers come uh, uh, great responsibilities. You know, and I think sure. as us as entrepreneurs, influencers, professionals, people that have a voice, and people that you know have you know uh, uh, built you know businesses and, and and platforms and all of all that stuff, we need to use that and and empower others. You know, I'm gonna keep returning sure. that because that's something that's super important, and I uh, commend you for that. Um, I'm excited for the growth of Fishy. Looking forward to you know obviously. Fishy become becoming like a global brand. Uh, the story is super interesting. I think people will definitely gravitate towards that. Um, and you're doing well with it, man. So congratulations and uh, thank you for thank you. all of the, the, you know, you know, all the insights that you've shared with us regarding overcoming some of the biggest challenges, which is one of them came recently in you know, closing down your stores and focusing on online, which is something that a lot of people have to do. And you being successful at it is a true uh, a testament to how hard you're supposed to be working as an entrepreneur to to uh, reach your dreams and, uh, and make and make them a sure. reality. And so, remember uh, Hurricane Maria in 2017? <laughs> yeah, oh, that is true. That. <laughs> that was another. That was another challenge. I remember that. I remember that. Hurricane Maria. Well, you know, honestly, that's where it started, basically. I, I, mm -hmm. I, as a graphic designer, I was just basically, you know, graphic design, as a graphic design freelancer, you get a job, you you make the job, you build mm -hmm. the job, and you're done. And that's it. That's it. The reason why I really jumped into fishing, you know, in 2018, I was ready. I was prepared. I had all the tools. But I was, I wanted to put my design to work for me. 
And one Air Force of one graphic design, I can multiply it. I can multiply it in different products. I have a t-shirt, a sticker, a t-shirt, and everything. So that's very, very, very interesting in terms of how challenges they, you have to overcome, you have to, you know, pass them, you have to climb them, and, and you're going to fall a lot, but, you, you know, clean your knees and stand up and keep on going. Because that's what makes the base, the foundation of your uh, uh, of your company. So it's quite interesting. Hurricanes, earthquakes, <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> yep, and you're still there, man. You're still there. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Getting Social Podcast. If you know a friend that would benefit from this episode, please share it. And remember to subscribe and review.